you're a bit to the side. Hello, welcome to Radio FM 88 Australia. My name is Jeffrey Shaw. Above me is Julia Choi, and um, on the screen is the map of Australia. <clears throat> Tonight's show was originally having a Dr. Jane, who is coming from Alice Springs, and um, we did a test trial at four o'clock this afternoon. But I can gratefully advise you that the NBN doesn't work in Alice Springs, and yet it's the home of the original telegraph that came from Darwin through to Adelaide. And Alice Springs was epicenter for that fantastic form of communication with the track of all the camels. It was a huge big thing if you go to Alice Springs and you have a look around. But um, today, the modern technology hasn't gotten to Alice Springs. So it's a bit of a shame there that um, Dr. Jane hasn't been able to come forth. Her knowledge, of course, would have been outstanding dealing with um, ancient anthropology, the study of man. Um, so um, the show must go on, and of course, um, myself have been out to Uluru, the Olgas, um, Kings Canyon, Palm Valley, and um, and Alice. In fact, I've seen um, <clears throat> the Todd River flow twice, so I have to see it once more, and then I become a true territorian. So they tell me. Anyway, um, without further ado, we are moving into the area of central Australia and as we lock in there to Uluru and the reason we are here at um, Uluru is um, a significant aspect of here in um, the southern hemisphere we have our summer solstice <clears throat> approximately around the 21st of December and of course in the northern hemisphere it's the winter solstice and um, the shortest day of the year up there in the northern hemisphere and of course here in west of course here in central australia or, or down here in the southern hemisphere it's the longest um, days so we are tuning in onto this little spot here and it's going to be a major um location here it's um it's uh, quite an interesting concept i will say to you that um anyone who has made the journey out to um, uluru would find that you'll see another major monolith on the left-hand side. And one gets really confused to assume that it's actually Uluru. In fact, it's uh, Mount Connor. And um, it's equally, if not bigger, than um, Uluru itself. Now, with all that, I'd um, like to introduce um, Julia. Now she's sitting um, over to the left-hand side of the screen. So it's a uh, hello to Julia. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Welcome on this beautiful evening. Yes, everyone is excited because we are coming up to 21.1220 and everyone is excited because people are saying it's going to usher in the age of Aquarius. And um, there is apparently a prophecy that, um, and apparently the elders who are guardians of Uluru have already, from what we hear, already done a ceremony in October. Uh, there is a prophecy that the rainbow serpent is going to become a rainbow bridge, a bit like in Thor, and it will rise up and connect with the light of the sun, go straight into the heart of Mother Earth, as a result of which cleansing, energizing, and reinvigoration of Mother Earth will come, ushering a new era of consciousness for Mother Earth. Earth and her children, which is us. So uh, we thought we would, um, you know, a lot of my friends are excited and have been there out there in January and um, are going out next week and on the 18th to take part in that. And uh, we just thought we would chat about that. And I know, Jeff, you've already heard other things have been done in advance in, prepar in, in preparation for that. Yeah, um, a lot of it's um, kept very quiet and it's done for, um, well, ceremony reasons, I suppose. But um, a good um, friend of mine um, discovered the law stick that had been owned by um, a medicine man 
some hundred or so years ago, and um, he was held in captivity, and um, the law stick was taken from him. Uh, he was a true blue medicine man, and the in the ilk that Aboriginal community would fully understand. Um, this gentleman um, discovered this law stick early in the year, and he made the journey to the Uluru and handed it over to the elders. And then they proceeded to have a private ceremony, very private, in October. And the event that's taking place in December certainly corresponds with um, the December 21st and the summer solstice. Um, you mentioned in your preface there about um, the Rainbow Serpent, and a um, um, good friend of mine, Andrina, and I happened to be standing on the balcony um, when a huge big downpour took place in Queensland. And um, we took these photos and not realizing until we've actually blew them up on the, the big desktop screen, what we actually captured. And um, whether you call it the rainbow serpent, rainbow dragon, it's certainly, um, you can see the image coming through quite strongly. And that was back on the 13th of January in 2011. So um, certainly, you know, it's just, not one singular date <clears throat> that this particular event's taking place. It's it's available to everyone anytime. It's just a matter of um, opening your consciousness, and sometimes you know you just need to open um, open that door, don't you? <clears throat> and allow it to happen and be there, be yeah. present. Yeah. Yeah, that's a so, really that's... stunning picture. I just love the dragon curling around, and and yeah, yeah I think you're right. It's the 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 forces of nature and Forces of creation and destruction around us, and part of you know, this this little stage that we call Mother Earth, and she who calls us, and um, yeah, without without them we wouldn't exist. And, um, I believe that with that is the direction we all have to you know, realization, and we have to start taking responsibility and move in that direction and connect, connect. And that was, you know, my, the big excitement that um, that's going to happen. There's actually another prophecy that um, another friend of mine is quite excited about, and that comes from the wing makers out in um, the Native American Indian ones. It reminds me of those sort of rainbow tribe, you know, the rainbow prophecy that all from all corners of the earth, different the children of different children of different generations of tribes will be unified and come together regardless of color and creed and race in one common cause so yeah they're also expecting something to happen around the 21st 12th and um they believe that somewhere in the caves somewhere on this earth is hidden a capsule from the wing makers and that that will also come out and um but you know i certainly have been noticing you know myself that high dimensional energies are available to us and if any of you are listening and have had experiences in Uluru or of the high dimensional energies, apparently there's a lot of spaceships that come out here as well. You know, do drop us a comment or a chat line. We'd love to hear from you. If you're headed out there, let us know. Sure. Um, so this photo here is of um, Mount Connor. So you, you can see um, it's almost like you see the photos of Cape Town, you know, um, tabletop mountain but this is actually mount connor some call it um, mount atlas so um you can see how mystifying this whole area is isn't it yeah mm. so um let's go back here into um some the trip that i made out to the center was um quite surreal because um, we had a party of 22 and, and there's only two Australians on board um, and we're both from Brisbane and um, we arrived at the rock um, let me pull it up and so let's start with the first here we go. Now, can you see something that's completely different that you normally would see when you go out to Central Australia? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to go to Specsavers there, Julia, but no, you're quite right. It's more, 
it's wet yeah and that's yeah. very rare isn't it so um let's just take a journey through the photos here and of course there we are yeah. there's the rock itself under cloud cover mm -hmm. i mean these are very rare i mean it is yeah and, and they have europeans on our trip very disappointed that they never saw the bright colorful you know daylight that big yellow orb <laughs> called the sun and blue sky they were very disappointed i said excuse me excuse me how many people on this planet are witnessing what we're witnessing right now yeah uh -huh. so um <clears throat> i mean you just see the rich colors that are coming out of the rock so it's, you know it's really quite spectacular yeah um, it's um so of course cameras have come a long way uh in the, the years that when i first took these photos but um mm. this is, <laughs> there's actually rain there um yeah it's lovely seeing the pictures because i mean you know every every uh piece of land also has a spirit so you know for our viewers it's up here you can connect with the spirit of Luru and um yeah, and so. um talk to it in your meditation it brings our faces doesn't it yeah mm. That's what I noticed when I was out there. It was quite primordial, you know. It's almost like you're there at the early footsteps of man and just those footsteps are vibrating through the earth itself and that consciousness is available, you know, just a matter of when people are aware and wake up to it, you know. And, um, of course, this is the entrance to the climb that people t undertook, but that was um, there's a ceremony there last year that um, stopped that from happening. So... Um, I have to say, I, I never felt tempted to go there anyway. So, um, so I can understand why people climb it because people want, want to get to the highest point, don't they? I mean, the Catholic Church like to put all their churches at the top of mountains and top of hills to get the commanding view. Um, I'll just continue through. I just, um, I mean, that's just amazing. Um, landscape on it so if people are making a journey out there 18th 19th 20th 21st you know um i was just extremely lucky to have it in such a um a nice temperature without the humidity so um it's something people have to be aware of when they make that journey out there that you're going to be looking at 40 plus 45 perhaps even 50 degrees celsius um, yeah my girls were there last week and it was by 10 o'clock it was 36 degrees sorry 39 degrees mm. yeah so you definitely need to hydrate and um i certainly would suggest to people like surf clubs you know how we used to say to people you know keep away between 11 o'clock and well half past two really it's a prime time for getting cooked in it so i would certainly say the same for being out there at little room yeah mm. um, now here's an interesting concept here because um in uh, the legends of Alice Springs there there's um, an area set aside for women's business and there's this area set aside for men's business and um, I'll just leave the subject there I think um, rather than make it open for public consumption yeah but um, I found it I found it really um exhilarating to go out to a place like that where there's no um uh, you know in european traditions you know, you've got the castles and you've got all this all that rock and stone to sort of protect themselves and defend themselves and they've got moats and all that stuff and then they've got a history of music and they've got artistry and the painting and pottery and all that stuff and it's quite interesting type of community that they've developed and you feel quite claustrophobic in the sense that all those little units little houses and all that stuff are sitting right on top of each other and then all of a sudden you step out and you go to central australia and it's almost like your energy just goes oh thank god and you just go woof and your energy just seems to go extremely for seems like bloody kilometers you just sense and feel the earth and you can understand why you know the local indigenous people feel so closely connected to their country because i felt it 
and I'm sure anybody who's open to energy or just the fact that you go there and you know that you haven't got your neighbours, you know, breathing down on you and not hearing noisy motorbikes or the, the screaming going on, just to go out there and hear the silence of the bush. In fact, it's not the silence of the bush. There is another sound. It's it's the sound of the earth. It's the sound of the wind, you know. Um, mm. It just, I, I find it a really exhilarating place to be and a, and a really wholesome place to go for your soul to get fed by just working on the earth. You know. I have to say, I'm, untainted I'm, earth sounds yeah, marvelous. I, yeah, yeah. I, I put my hand up and say, the local indigenous people, you're very lucky people. Yeah. Mm. And you can't put a million dollars on it or five million dollars or ten million dollars. You know, it's it's the land and you're walking with it and I fully understand it. And of course, yeah. Know, at night, I've never been so closely connected to the fact that when I go to sleep at night there, it's almost like I remember this one particular night I woke up with a startle because there was a group of Aborigine people, um, hunters is the best way to explain it, in spirit came right through the camp and right through the bloody tent. Boom, 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 and went straight through me. And I thought, oh, my God, how close is the veil here? This is a really amazing place, yeah? Yeah, and, um, you know, good on the local guardians for keeping it free of, you know, resisting the temptation to make money out of it and commercialise it, just staying pure to their roles. Oh, standing up for that as well. I remember um, going into Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris and I went in there and they had a full service and us tourists came in and, of course, um, we, lacked, we lacked decorum is the best way to say it because I remember you know, like 30 people just got their cameras out and taking photos and all these flashes are going off, you know, and, and a woman who is in the French woman just turned around and she just, no, 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 no you know. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty, mate. I'm guilty going into the Notre Dame to be there where there's a ceremony taking place and taking photos of this magnificent Notre Dame cathedral. You know, it was on my bucket list and here I am just having to walk in when they're doing mass. Um, mm -hmm. And I can understand why the local indigenous people are saying, you know, excuse me, respect what we've got here, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I guess to our audience, if you're listening now or in the future, if you are um, one of the elders or indigenous or whether if you've been to Uluru and um, you've been on the 21st December, we'd love to hear from you. Get in touch with us when we come back from the break next year. Um, we'd love to have you on the show. And tell us what, you know, what your experience was of Apart from what forecast, what really happened, and um, inspire us on dreaming the new dream with Jeffrey Shaw and myself, Julia Chai. All right. So um, I just want to bring up here that um, for those people who are around the world, I'm not too sure if you can actually see that, but um, this event has been locked and loaded um, with a world clock fixed time. So whilst this event um, is taking place in um, Central Australia, which is on its own Central Australian time. It doesn't jump to daylight savings. So uh, for those people, and of course, Central Australia operates 30 minutes behind Queensland and um, for our viewers in New South Wales and Victoria and Tasmania, you, you guys are on daylight savings. So this particular time here that says 8 o'clock, is purely because um, where we are, the desktops picked up our time slots at 802 but that'll be 902 for you and New South Wales and Victoria and uh, that'll be 11 o'clock at night in in uh, New Zealand so um, yeah so they've got a whole particular page there what I'll do is I'll um, I'll just copy that I think and um, see if I can't put that into the Facebook group, or not the Facebook group, the uh, into the banner here so that people can actually uh, click on it themselves. That'd be the go. Um, now, there is a, a really good Facebook page um, that Trish Levitt put together, isn't she? Um, that would be 
ideally suited for people to have a quick jump on and find out what's going on. And would that be? Yes, I believe Trish Levitt um, is 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 organising um, or is involved in in um, in ceremony around that date or that occasion, and she's on Facebook, and you can connect with her. Um, and of course, if you're in Alice Springs, I do suggest that um, you can collect with our intended guest, uh, who runs the Red Heart Centre in Alice Springs, Dr. Jane Suming Lai. She's done a lot of uh, ceremonies and also worked with Luca elders and has permission from Uncle Bob Randall, who's quite famous, to share the principles of Kanyini, which means actualization of oneness with the earth, just recognizing, you know, going into unity consciousness and acting out of it. That's what we can learn from the local indigenous, and that's also the message that they're trying to keep alive um, amongst the younger generations. Right. Okay. So um, I've just put that uh, Facebook site for um, Trish there, and um, let's see if we can't um, bring it up. Yeah, it's, uh... Okay. So uh, it's a Facebook site. I'll just put it down here for people to uh, have a look. There it is there. And then, um, okay, so there's a little thing that's open for the public for this particular Facebook site. It speaks about global meditation. You don't physically have to go to Uluru, but um, you can do it in your own part of the world. I mean, your soul is of your feet, but touching the earth. If you're doing that, um, fantastic. And if you're drinking uh, some of the, the waters of our... Um, enriched earth that's fantastic those who wish to um, hug a tree but i think it's more important to hug another person another human i think that's more important today is is the touch you know so a big hug going out to vicky cunningham and kate st Clair. so thanks for joining us and uh, kate st Clair is asking so for townsville is it 8 or 4 to 9 30. pardon me what was that question She's asking for Townsville, is it 8.04 to 9.30? I think that was based on the time clock that you were no, talking about earlier. It, it, 8.02, love. Mm. 8.02, yeah. Hey, um, okay. Kate, it's quite fantastic. All right. Um, is there anything else we need to talk about? Because I think most people realise... <laughs> we can't talk about this we're not authorized so. <laughs> yeah sorry sorry folks again you know i mean out of 25 shows this is the first one we've had technical difficulties that beat us but um anyway thanks for joining us and um jeff um thanks for you know, hosting us and next week is the last session before christmas we have ev friggin Coming on the show, she is um, a uh, musician and artist, and she has put to together a beautiful CD with um, affirmations and uh, spiritual inspirations on that. So we'll be finishing the show with a creative person next next term next week. I've actually uh, had a listen to the introduction, and I have to say I was really, really impressed um, with what she had to offer, and. Um, yeah, you know, Christmas can be a lonely time for people, and um, if you were just to have a listen into this particular lady and her um, inspirational words and comments, I think uh, they're certainly uplifting. And anybody who's a budding musician probably could use those words and put them to music. And who knows? You know, she could be. The That's right. Person. Remember, any time the difference between a good situation and a bad situation is just our perspective, and people put up beautiful words and sounds. To help us shift that perspective. All right. Okay. Thank you. Right. And, uh, to um, Dr. Jane, we apologize. Um, we never took it on board. It's NBN for you. Um, and uh, Arnie Mini Mace, um, it'd be nice to catch up with you and your brother again. Uh, that'd be a wonderful situation there. And Arnie Robin at Tumba, um, give my thoughts out to you as well. 
Uh, okay, we'll sign you off. Okay, good night, everyone. Thanks. Have a lovely week. Thank you.